Now, NBC26 meteorologist Gino Recchia. While it was warmer outside today, it still was a little bit below average. We had a high of 18 degrees. At least there was one above in Fargo today. It's nice to get a bit of a warming trend and it's crazy to feel how we were only in the teens and it felt so much better. Well, just wait until later this week when we we're talking about some 40s in the forecast. Well above average temperatures going from extremely cold to I wouldn't say extremely warm, but mild heading into Northeast Wisconsin. Here's a look at the time lapse this afternoon. We had a pretty nice day. Lots of snow on the ground, probably grabbing the sunglasses, something that we really haven't had to need the last few days with a lot of this cloudy weather that we've been dealing with. But overall, not too shabby. We can thank this high pressure right now over the central plains moving eastward. But the clouds are building in here tonight and our next weather maker, a weak area of low pressure up towards the north near British Columbia and Alberta. That could bring in a slight wintry mix, especially in the far north woods locations tomorrow. Elsewhere, it's just going to be a pretty much cloudy day. So for the close picture, we've got some high level clouds building in here from the northwest. Closer look shows some lake effect snow showers still ongoing on the eastern shores of Lake Michigan. And for the Buffalo folks, if you've been watching some national news headlines, I saw the Buffalo Airport. 45 uh, 49 inches of snowfall this morning and it's still snowing expected to wind down by early tomorrow morning. But here's our next weather maker doesn't really seem that impressive on radar, but that will change. And as we head into the day tomorrow, we'll start off nice and quiet with mostly cloudy skies, but the clouds will build and will turn mostly cloudy by the afternoon hours. And here comes that light snow, little wintry mix, mainly just north of Highway 29. So I would say Door County up towards Marinette and Menominee counties could see a little bit of some light snow or perhaps some freezing drizzle as it passes through and then eventually dissipates by our Wednesday morning. Snowfall forecast, hardly a trace, a light dusting of snowfall, not a big deal whatsoever. And in terms of any ice accumulation, there's been hints of a, a little bit of a drizzle, perhaps picking up about four to five hundredths of an inch. Just enough to add a, a thin coating and could cause some slippery spots, especially on any untreated roadway. As for the temperature for tomorrow, with winds gusty out of the southwest, that will gradually warm our temperatures up into the lower 20s. Our normal high for this time of year is 28 degrees. And you see how those winds gust at about 25 to 30 miles per hour during the day tomorrow. And then when you factor in while we have temperatures in the lower 20s, gusty southwest winds near 30 miles per hour, you can probably get the idea it's not going to feel like the lower 20s. It'll feel more like about 10 degrees outside by the evening hours tomorrow. So we'll cool off to three tonight. We'll have southwest winds at five to 10 miles per hour with mostly cloudy skies. Then for tomorrow, we'll transition over to perhaps a little wintry mix north of Highway 29 in the far north woods and the Door Peninsula. A little breeze out of the southwest, 10 to 20 gusts near 30. 70 forecast, mostly cloudy on Wednesday. Some rain showers move in here on Thursday and Friday, and then we could have a little on and off chance as we head towards Chris, uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day as we strike the beginning of 2023 and carrying that over to perhaps another chance of a wintry mix on Monday. After the break, the latest on working to stay healthy these winter months. New numbers from the CDC show early signs the flu season might have peaked, but that's far from a guarantee. Here's NBC's Sam Brock. It's the most wonderful time of the year to see family, but unfortunately the holidays have also proved fertile ground for transmitting viruses, and many Americans are all too aware. I'm vaccinated and boosted and even got the flu vaccine. We try to be safe, you know, try not to see a lot of people during this time so we can actually be with our, with our loved ones. Those all important get togethers are coming at a time when hospitalizations for the flu have fallen for two consecutive weeks. Though seasonal activity remains high, according to the CDC and COVID infections are beginning to gather steam. Over the last two weeks, COVID hospitalizations are up 7% and deaths 15%. The places with the biggest change in hospitalized patients span the map from Delaware, D.C. and New Hampshire in the east to Louisiana in the south and Wyoming in the west, where the figure has jumped more than 40% in a week. 
at Miami's largest health care system, Jackson Health. It's essentially quadrupled. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hani Atala says there's been a significant uptick in patients just in recent weeks. We saw COVID was in the, in the teens maybe three, four weeks ago. It was relatively low. We saw that number jump up to the to mid to high 90s about a week ago or so. And with Americans crisscrossing the country, many fighting weather and coughs, the best option may be to assume those you travel around in the next couple of weeks are sick. On the return trip home, and also in those first few days going back to school, back to work, what kind of advice do you have for people? If you're traveling nowadays, make sure you're wearing a mask. Obviously, it's even better if you're wearing a mask and have your vaccine. Um, you know, if you can schedule your travel at times where it's a less busy travel time, which of course is difficult this time of season, that's a good idea as well. Even now, medical experts say getting a flu shot or a COVID booster could make a big difference. The Community Blood Center continued the season of giving today by hosting the fifth annual holiday blood drive. That CBC tradition helps ensure blood is available to local hospital patients in the days following the holidays. So the winter weather and the holidays can produce a challenging time for us to collect blood. Right now we're actually in a critical need of all blood types. So if you are feeling well and healthy and you're eligible to donate, please come out and donate blood right away. The CBC wants to remind people that the need for blood does not take a holiday. So all healthy and eligible donors are encouraged to schedule an appointment at communityblood.org. Coming up, we'll hear a heartwarming story about a kidney donor with a special connection to the man in need. 